after we thought a Zach Levine to the Los Angeles Lakers trade could be completely off the table. Reports have just been released stating that a new three-team trade could cause Zach Levine to land with the Lakers. I'm your host, Joey Mercer. This is another episode of Bulls Digest. And before we get into it there today, I just want to say that about 85% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and every single time we upload, you will be notified so you can stay up to date with our takes on your Chicago Bulls. So without further ado, let's get into the topic at hand here today being a new Levine trade that works. Now, we're going to discuss and see if this is one that I think that the Bulls should actually do, give my take on it, and I'd like for you guys to get interactive down in the comments below and see how you feel about it, if this is the right move. I'm sure you all will, as I like hearing all of your takes and different opinions and views on what the Bulls should do for the remainder of the season, because it doesn't seem like there's a consensus, which is interesting in my opinion, that we can go back and forth and really see everybody's opinion on what the Bulls should be doing. This article was by Stephen Beslick, and it says, a three-team trade proposal that would finally get Zach Levine to the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers finally get Zach Levine in this wild trade idea. Now, this was an article put up by Sports Illustrated, which played off an article I recently found by Bleacher Report and didn't really get too much traction, but now it is, so we're going to be talking about it. The first thing we saw in this article was the mutual interest between Chicago Bulls wingman Zach Levine and the Los Angeles Lakers has long been rumored, but a deal is yet to come to fruition. However, with both teams struggling this season, the Lakers looking for additional firepower alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis now may be the perfect time for a trade. In this three-team trade concocted by Bleacher Report's Andy Bailey, the Bulls would give up Zach Levine and Andre Drummond, and in return would receive D'Lo, Davis Bertans, Jalen hood Shafino, and three draft picks from both the Lakers and the Oklahoma City Thunder. So a pretty wild trade going three different ways. Uh, we're going to be breaking down exactly how I feel about this one now in a minute, but just to mention the pieces being moved. So we're losing Drummond. And we're losing, of course, Zach Levine. Getting back to Elo, Jalen Hood, Shafino as a prospect, and Davis Bertans to kind of make up some salary in return, not really looking at getting much out of him. We also get some draft capital in return, so this could be a very good trade for the Bulls. The Lakers would obviously have to give up something because they're getting a star player in Zach Levine, albeit if he can stay healthy, let's hope he could in a trade. And then when it comes to the Thunder side of things, they get a big man which they could really use off the bench as... Uh, big Jalen Williams, J-A-Y-L-I-N, uh, is definitely not exactly the backup big they're looking for behind Chet Holmgren, so it's a little bit of a different look if they go in a playoff series against Embiid. Chet's very frail and small, although he does get uh, blocks, he's not going to be able to guard Embiid in 48 minutes, and uh, having Drummond off the bench to do something like that could definitely be hel helpful for them, so it's solid all around in that opinion. Next thing we saw in this article was, time to start anew. The writing has been splattered on the wall for a while, but the Bulls' front office has blatantly ignored it. Perhaps this remarkable stat would jar them awake. The Bulls' big three of Zach Levine, DeMar Rose, and Nikola Vucevic have played together for more than 3,000 minutes. In that span, Chicago is minus 2.8 points per 100 possessions. That's simply not good enough for a team with playoff aspirations. And there's nothing to really argue about there. I mean, if, if you're basically three points worse for 100 possessions with your quote-unquote big three, it's not a big three. It's actually three players that you wouldn't want on the court all the time because you're not getting a positive net rating with them out there. Uh, so that's not something that the Bulls should be happy about. This is just a sample with those three guys, so it's completely fair when it's just focused on those guys, and it means that maybe there needs to be some different lineups with them, maybe one needs to go, or maybe it needs to be completely split off and we start from new, and that's where they're basically getting this point in the article. We'll now look at a quote that we saw based on this from uh, Andy Bailey, and it says, when you consider the fact that those three are 28, 34, and 33 respectively, it's hard to deny that it's time for a fresh start. This deal at least turns them in that direction, 
Separate trades to bring in additional assets or young players for DeRozan, and Vucevic would help too, Bailey wrote. Now, I usually don't agree with Andy Bailey, but in that sense, I have to. Zach Levine doesn't look like he's contributing to winning on a very consistent basis with the Chicago Bulls, and then when you look at Vooch and DeRozan being 34 and 33, it's not exactly ideal for what you're looking for in a team going forward. If you can get younger assets for those guys and try to sell high, uh, then absolutely go for it. If teams are not willing to take on Vooch as much, then keep him while you can right now, but maybe a contender would be looking at getting DeRozan for some prospects that they don't think they'll be able to develop right now that the Bulls could in a nearer future than with that team. Uh, it's always good to try to develop prospects on teams that have time to play them as opposed to contenders where you could basically be ruining a player's early part of his career by not giving him the developmental system that he needs to strive. The next thing that we saw on this was what the Bulls will get. With the young core the Bulls have, Russell and Bertans could be nothing more than salary fillers in this deal, who may be flipped in another transaction with a different team. The real payoff in this imaginary trade lies in the draft picks the Bulls would get. Obviously, this deal is mostly about the draft compensation for Chicago. While the Bulls might want a little more for Levine after seeing the Toronto Raptors get three firsts for Pascal Siakam, this is a pretty decent haul for a two with a significant injury history and little to no impact on winning for the past couple years, Bailey wrote. Now, it's a hard pill to swallow for us Bulls fans hearing little to, you know, nothing when it comes to winning uh, coming from Zach Levine, but it's true. There is no sample size saying that he helps us win basketball games. It just simply isn't there. He has turned things around to end of games to kind of go off against the Hornets and Hawks that time. Uh, in order for us to win a game, but it isn't on a consistent enough basis, and there's a much larger sample size than those small few games that shows that him being on the court has caused us to lose a few. Uh, that's not exactly what you want out of a star player, and Pascal is going to get more, even though he has an expiring contract, where teams think they can re-sign him in the offseason, and he just made an all-NBA team last season. That's not what Zach Levine did. Teams are definitely going to be looking at what players are doing currently, most recently, and in the near future if they're looking at a star type of already developed player, as opposed to someone who's done something two or three years ago, in Zach Levine's case. Uh, Siakam definitely had a higher ceiling for that right now, and that's why the Pacers paid a little bit more for him. But the next thing that I saw really spoke to me. When you looked at D'Lo, actually... Uh, the Hawks didn't want to take him on, so they were looking for a third team. So D'Lo us being taken on uh, once again. Would the Bulls want to take on D'Lo right now? It doesn't seem like anybody really wants to for whatever reason it may be. But the next thing that I saw was actually talking about the Terry Rozier trade. Kind of touching on that a little bit and relating to the Zach Levine. It was here by Ross Pins, and you can see... There's just no way you expect me to believe that Zach Levine has no trade market when you've got Thierry Rogier going for a first-round pick. And that was Shams tweeting out just in, Miami is nearing a trade to acquire Charlotte's Thierry Rogier for a package sending Kyle Lowry and draft compensation that includes a first-round pick. And that trade actually did go through. Now, a little bit of a different situation for sure. Thierry Rogier is always healthy. That's one thing to take into account. He's still a 20-point per game score. Another thing to take into account. He's a very bad defender, and he also is pretty undersized playing at the two. But if they're looking for him to play point guard, maybe a very solid option over there in Miami. Do I think he's a better player than Zach Levine? Absolutely not. I do like Thierry Rogier. Would have liked him on the Chicago Bulls for sure. But I think Levine should still go for more draft capital than that. So... Where we're kind of in this middle ground, if we saw Thierry Rogier go for a first, we saw Pascal go for three and expiring. I think that Zach Levine would be worth almost two firsts, maybe some seconds involved, and that's basically the value draft compensation-wise I would put him at with a player for salary filler and a, a solid rotation player right away. That's the value to be put on, so I do agree with the trade that was at hand. It isn't as crazy as it seemed to be initially. I don't like giving up Drummond as much. Seems like we have to give up a little bit more there because there were seconds involved in that, I think I remember. But... At the end of the day, I think that trade would definitely help the Bulls if we're looking to go in a little bit of a different direction and wouldn't be the worst move possible. Let me know what you guys think about that trade for sure down below in the comments. Uh, and make sure if you like the video to go down and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you all in the next one.